I brought back. No, never mind. I hate people who make me close your eyes. I hate surprises. Yeah. I know you do. Well, June, you remember? He was murdered five, six years ago. I remember, I remember, but just keep your voice down. Well, they reopened the case because of me. Wait a minute, I, I thought that psycho, what's his name? Peter Flint, didn't he confess? That's what everybody thought, but that uh, confession he typed, that suicide note, is phony, and I discovered it. Hey, do you want the whole world to hear this? No, no, it's very hush-hush. The only one that knows is Cruz Castillo. He brought the note down to the lab. If you'd have seen what I had to go through, gauging the depth of impression and all that, well, guess what? The part about killing Capwell, Flint didn't even type. <laughs> if I don't get a promotion out of this... Yeah, I'm ready. You think it's gorgeous? You gonna wear that to bed? Well, it's a nightgown. You don't wear it to parties. You hate it. No, I don't hate it. But I wish you'd take it off. Do you have any idea how few women in the world own something like this? No. How few? I'm trying to please you. It doesn't look like I'm succeeding. Where in L.A. did you get it? You don't want to know. Because Marcello gave it to you? No. Our Monte Industries is a promotional expense. So I'll wrap my daddy around my little finger and agree to the merger. I thought you'd like it. Cruz, just wanted to be the way it was. When every minute was exciting and new and, and we weren't striving to, to reach anything and we didn't care and... I want to be as attractive to you now as I was then. By proving how attractive you are to Marcello? What's the matter with you? Why are you so angry? You're not any fun anymore. Watching your wheels spin makes me angry, Eden. I don't need it to be new. I don't want to start over every day, so quit trying to make me win you. And how do you think I feel? You show up in this incredible thing that some... It reminds me of everything you are that I'm not. And I don't need to hear about all these other guys who are crazy about you, because I'm crazy about you enough for the whole world all by myself, alone as it is. I don't need to be reminded how lucky I am. Now take that off. No. I don't want to feel silk. I want to feel you. Now tell me where you want to be. Mason, all right? It's late. If you're tired, go on home. Look, you said we'd only stay here for a little while. Kev, 
You moved out of the house because you didn't want Dad telling you how to behave. Don't do the same thing with me. Now lend me a quarter. All right, one quarter. Then we're going. Right. Okay, now, would you go get me a drink? They know what I like at the bar. Ted? No! Look, I'll get it myself. Okay. Lend me five dollars till tomorrow. No. If you're trying to reform me, Ted, it's too late. I know. But I figure I don't have to help whatever's eating you up inside either. Ah, uh, what a benighted experiment this is turning out to be. Me with my scantily clad ladies of the evening and you with your fresh scrubbed face and calculus worksheets. I bet the old family manse is looking better every minute. You know, I'm glad I moved in with you. Why, pray tell? Well, you're my brother. I think we sort of need each other. I mean, we need somebody. Huh? Why not? Ted, I, uh, I forgot to tell you something about all the verbiage I've thrown your way. I, I warned you about Dad. I forgot to warn you about me. Now, some people are just no damn good. You have to learn to spot them at a distance and then stay away from them. You know, you talk too much, Mason. That's the only thing that's no good about you. Oh, yeah? Did I tell you I lost out on two more law partnerships today? No. Partnerships? Hell, I'd have been happy to lick stamps for them, but I guess they got a sponge to do oh, that. come on, Mason, you'll find something. Play the game. Yeah, Dad kind of intimidated every law firm in town. He, uh, <clears throat> they must be turning me down for some other reason. Uh, like what? Well, the paper said I bungled the investigation into Channing's murder. Of course, they had to put something. I don't know what else I could have done. Do you think... Do you think I bungled it? Do I think, uh, um, no, Mason, come on, I think you, uh, don't have to worry about those papers. <clears throat> you know you're good. Yeah, I used to know that. I used to know a lot of, a lot of things that turned out not to be true. Game over. Some people get an extra play every time. For me, what do I see when I go home and close my eyes? Every night, unless I'm drunk enough, game over. Game over. Mrs. DeMott, is everything okay? Oh, yes, really, I'm, I'm just fine. I was just uh, noticing the time, and I was wondering, is it... Time for my pill yet? No, not for a couple more hours. Oh. Well, I mean the, the pain pills. Do you need one? Well, I hate to be such a baby, but I, I hurt. I really do. Well, let me see what's ordered. I'll be right back. Thank you. Mrs. DeMott, there's a call for you. I wasn't sure if you were awake. Oh, fine. I'll, I'll take it. Thank you. Hello? Oh! Well, Cece, well, well, yes, I'm much better, darling. Oh, everyone's commenting on it. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess it's because I have so much to look forward to. Uh-huh. But what I... I'm sorry, I can hardly hear you. Uh-huh. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Well, what, what time is it out there? It... Oh, well, it must, must be the middle of the night. Excuse me. Oh, of course. What? What? Cece, that's, that's wonderful. And, and Sophia didn't contest it? W well, of course I'm happy, darling. I didn't realize that, that having the wedding postponed would mean I, I'd get proposed to so often. Uh-huh. Well, yes, darling. I want that, too. Well, I as, soon as, as soon as possible. Yes, oh, I don't want to wait. No, of course not. Oh, and I, I'll be better. I'll be better right away. I love you too. Good night. Well, uh, thank you. Well, I, I really feel so much better. I, I'm sure I won't have to stay another day. What do you think? Well, why don't we see how you feel in the morning and what the doctor says? Oh, but if I feel this good right now, I'm sure tomorrow I'll be ready to go home. I have a lot of things to do. A lot of important things that I can't put up. It's already tomorrow. It's after midnight. Well, you see? Who says tomorrow never comes? You be patient. I try. I know. 
I feel so ashamed. Baby, I don't want to do that to you. I make you. Which I only want something from me. It's just business. That's all. Yeah, but you can make him want you. And you will, if you think it'll drive me crazy, and it will. Don't love me too much. It's too late. Pretend you don't. I can't. I know it's stupid. Because the more I want you, the more you just run away. And I just want you all the more. I want you for good right here. Talk about your vicious circles. No, I never imagined it this way. Imagined what? Being in love. What did you imagine? A house and money and two careers and a couple of kids somewhere off in school. Yeah, I know it wasn't what you had in mind. It's no surprise. You weren't what I had in mind either. <laughs> But you know, baby, from the very first moment I laid eyes on you, I knew you were my dream. Even though I'd never dreamt you. I want too much. No, you worry too much. What you want is me. You'd be crazy not to. What is it? The big sour. Excuse me. Hello. Mr. Castillo, please. Yeah, you got him. What is this? This is somebody who knows you've reopened the Channing Capital murder case. Yeah, I'm listening. Look, I don't like doing this, and it's not just calling somebody up that I don't know after midnight. It's also the guy's a friend of mine, and I don't want to see him fired. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait. <laughs> How, how do you know about this? Well, Tillinger. The guy at the police station that, that you turned the uh, Peter Flint's confession into. Well, anyway, he had one drink too many and he was started talking too much. And I knew if it got out to the newspapers, well, there's no way he'd keep his job. Yeah, well, who else did he tell? Nobody. And I know if you just tell him to keep it cool, he will. Oh, and listen, don't tell him that I called, okay? I'll talk to him first thing in the morning. Thank you very much. Bad news? No harm to him, I guess. To what? To an investigation I'm not going to tell you about, so don't ask. You know, Mason said something to me about how you were digging up things on Channing's death. So when do you listen to Mason, anyway? Would you tell me if you were? If I could. Well, I sure hope the apartment's empty when we get back. <clears throat> Sorry about all Hello. Good morning, Augusta. It's your old friend Mason wondering what you're doing for lunch today. Not feeding you, but nice try. Well, actually, I was hoping that uh, you would join me. After all, you're a free woman now, more or less. Don't take that thought any further. I've just gotten up and my stomach's a bit queasy. <laughs> just meet me at the State Street Bistro at noon, Augusta. What for? 
Well, my inquisitive legal mind has, as you know, nothing better to do these days, and I think I may have hit upon a few suggestions to help you keep your errant husband at home. Away from home, as the case may be. <laughs> you mean keep him away from this house? Uh-huh. Well, you wouldn't believe what he did the other night. Oh, but I would, but I'm just as ingenious as he is, Augusta. I'll see you at noon. I said yes, I... I guess Mason just left. You don't have any idea why he wants to see me here this afternoon? Hmm. Well, he comes here a lot. <laughs> in fact, we were here just last night. And I, I saw Lake in here. You did? Great. Did you talk to her? Uh, no, she was with somebody else. Oh, Ted, I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. It's bound to happen. You know what the hardest thing is, though? It's not that she might care about somebody else. It's, it's that I was so sure that... We had something special. I don't know. It's, it's too hard to explain. You don't have to explain it to me. I understand. And I kind of feel the same way. Dad, I was sure. I was so sure that Lionel Lockridge was the one person in the world that I had every reason to fear and to hate. And now he and you and Lauren are telling me that I was wrong, that he didn't want me dead, that all those fears I had all those years were a mistake. Phone call for Sophia Capwell. Oh, I told the hotel where it'd be. Excuse me. For me. Said he's your lawyer. Oh, thank you very much. Hello, Carlo. <sighs> Wasn't a surprise. Was it? No, no, no. I'm, I'm fine. I'm all right. No, no. I thank you, and I, I thank you for calling me. Bye, bye. Everything okay? You might as well hear it from me. The divorce, uh, your, your father's and mine. It was official this morning. Well, how does that make you feel? I haven't been married to your father for many years, not really. Well, I knew it was coming. And I guess I'm, I'm glad in a way your father should be free to choose a life with whomever he wants. I don't want to make him feel trapped. But, Mom, I want him to choose you. I want him to choose all of us to be together again. Now, official or not, that's not going to change. He's still your father, and you have to respect that. And you have to respect that he wants to marry Gina. His happiness comes first. Why? And and I also think that, that you should move back into the house because you need a family and you say, I can't give you that now. But Mom, that is not a part of my family if you're not there. But why does everybody have to come first but you? Mom. I love you. sleep after seven I get up you crying yeah I was kind of worried I wake up and I brush my teeth and I cry sounds like fun maybe I should try it no I don't I hate men who cry so uh watch out California here comes Eden Capwell off to bully the world are you you're gonna yell at me in a minute we got to do something about this, don't we? What? Well, we keep winding up in the same place, having the same argument. Maybe we could just write it down that way. We wouldn't have to make it up fresh every time. <laughs> you know, I can't tell you how much I hate it when you sneak up, sneak out on me like this. Yeah, well, you're the professional sneak. You do it for a living. 
They'd be surprised to hear that at the department. I don't know why you, you make it out like I can't be trusted. I don't trust you either. You don't tell me the truth about things. Like what? Like the Amanda Lockridge. Gina. Maybe Channing. Why, why, why are you so interested in Channing all of a sudden? I mean, you never used to mention Channing. Because of what Mason said. How did you feel when he died, anyway? Well, how do you think? He was my brother. I think you loved him very much and hated his guts. Yeah, well, that Which just... probably made it all the harder for you, I know. And he was your daddy's pride and joy. He was the one that was groomed to take over the family business. You might have been smarter and tougher and better all around, but you were only a girl. Let's just say that I think I understood Channing more than anyone else. Let's leave it at that. Yeah, but then after he died, did CC sent you off to Europe immediately? I mean, didn't that kind of give you a few changes about how how... How important he didn't think you were or something? You think about me too much. I'm not a wind-up toy. I don't do things or feel a certain way just because it makes sense to people. I'm going. I know. Who's about? Oh, yes, Doctor. I'm feeling much better today. Yeah, well, you're defying medical science, Mrs. DeMott. By all rights, you should hardly be able to move. Well, I've always been a fast healer. Yeah. Well, it looks as though we're going to have to let you go in a couple of days. Oh. Well, you don't have to jump for joy, but I think I know a certain bridegroom-to-be who will. Well, you see, Mr. Capwell is getting back tonight, and I was hoping to be there to greet him. Um, please, sit down. I'm afraid I have some rather disappointing news to give you before either one of us talks to Mr. Capwell tonight. What? Is something wrong? Well, while you were unconscious after the accident, Mr. Capwell told me that you were several weeks pregnant. And he asked me to check and see that nothing had happened to endanger you having a child. Well, nothing has. I would have known. Mrs. DeMott, who told you you were pregnant? I went to a clinic. It was Dr. Um, well, I forgot his name. I have the name at home, though. I'm afraid the, uh, those kind of tests are not infallible. Your doctor was mistaken. You are not pregnant. No, yes, I am. I, I know I am. You see, now, you might have made a mistake, but as soon as you release me, I'll go back to the clinic and check this out. We ran several tests, Mrs. DeMott. More than once. I'm sorry. Oh, uh... Well, then, uh... I would like to tell Mr. Capwell myself, if you don't, if you don't mind, in my, in my own time... He'll be very upset. Of course. Um, what would you like me to say if he should ask me? Oh, he won't, because you won't see him. You see, I want to be released this afternoon. No. No, I think there's too much risk in that. Well, why? I'm feeling much better. I'm walking around. I have no more headaches, very little pain. All right. All right, I'll consider it. But I, I want to examine you first before I make any final decision. Well, it was nice of you to condescend to join me, Augusta. I decided that before I die, I want to be able to say I had one free meal from a cat. <laughs> I should have alerted the photographers. Mm, is this your new headquarter or bar? Oh, that's a coming thing, Augusta. Don't you know? You've heard of those plush new laundromats where they have cozy little bars behind the dryer? That's the same principle. Oh, I see. So your clients can have a martini while you launder their cat. <laughs> Do you also sleep here? No, at the moment I'm staying in my sister Kelly's apartment. Ah, what basin? You really should take off your suit before you go to bed. And about that shirt, well, no comment. Excuse me. Did you guys want something? Kenny, if you'll look closely, you'll see that this guy is a lady and she's also my guest. Of course we want something. We want lunch. Mason, I think there may be a little credit problem. Nonsense, Kenny. I've spoken to Frank. Just bring us some menus. Oh, no, we don't need menus, dear. Just what is the most expensive thing you have? Well... Yes, well, I'll take that with a side order of hollandaise. We're not ready to order yet. Kenny, just bring us the menus. Thank you. Okay. This should be a lark. You call me to drum up business, and instead I'm taking you for your last nickel, if you have one. 
Augusta, I called you because you're in grave danger of losing whatever security you might have had as Lionel's wife. None. No, I mean financial security. Gary Simpson, Lionel's lawyer, is ruthless and very smart. I know that Minx and Lionel will use him to try to force you out of the house, perhaps out of the family altogether. <laughs> Gary Simpson is a very sweet imbecile who couldn't even spring Lionel from jail when you cook up that ridiculously nonsensical murder charge. And as for Minx, she'd rather sell the house or auction her shoes before she'd let Lionel frolic on the grounds with Sophia. Ah, here she is now. Cancel the hollandaise. I just lost my appetite. What is she doing here? <laughs> now, now, you're both going to need protection from Lionel, so you're both going to want to hear what I have to say. Where are those menus? Don't go away. I'll be right back, ladies. Well, I'm not leaving. I was invited. So was I. So you can just give me whatever prescription you think I'll need. And I'm sure I'll be more comfortable and I'll sleep better at home. And no offense intended to the hospital, but I'm sure Rosa can feed me better there, too. All right. All right, I'm convinced. Really, doctor, I can go home? Yes. You don't know how important that is to me. And, um, like I said before, the prescription, C can you do that for me? Just in case the pain comes back. I can, but why? According to your chart, you haven't had a pill since last night at midnight. Well, that, that's, that's true. Yeah, I, I felt fine, but I mean, you know, just in case the pain comes back. Mrs. Dumont, have you been experiencing any queasiness or dizziness this morning? Were you feeling shaky at all? Um, no, why? But... Well, because with this particular drug, the body builds a dependency very quickly. And of course, if you haven't experienced any withdrawal symptoms up to now... It's I... addictive? Yes. Well, I didn't... Well, then maybe I shouldn't, um... Oh, uh, I'm sure it'll be all right. Well, you can just give me a few, and I'll only take them if I really need them. I may not need them at all. I understand you and Cece are divorced now. I understand you and Lionel are separated. Yes, he's such a pest. I remember how persistent he can be. Oh, well, he keeps trying to break into the house and ask my forgiveness. I'm sure he's just coming to visit the children and the dog. Frank, I doubt very seriously if anybody's going to eat anything. If they order anything, just tell the cook to ignore it. <laughs> Thank you. Here we are, ladies. Menus for everyone. I'm told the boneless breast of chicken is wonderful this evening. Don't talk to us about breasts. Just get to the point. And it better be good, Mason. Oh, it is. It is. My point is that for a uh, very small retainer from the two of you, a pittance, really, fraction of my usual fee... Ah, oh, you want money. Something new. Would you just get on with the list? All right, I will. I'm sure you're both familiar with what a restraining order is. Well, <clears throat> since it's public knowledge that Lionel is immoral, violent, and a thief, I should have no trouble persuading a judge to order Lionel to stay away from the two of you under a fine or, or imprisonment. Maybe I will have that breast of chicken. Why would we be interested in that? Well, Augusta seems less concerned with uh, any legal action Lionel might take than with his further incursions into the house. In addition, she would have the added assurance that uh, another court order was keeping you, or keeping Lionel, away from you. I don't see Lionel. You, on the other hand, would have the assurance of knowing that Lionel would never get close enough to you to make another attempt on your life. I'm not afraid of that. Oh, I thought you were afraid of it. And I thought you thought I was in love with him. I wish you would make up your mind, Augusta. Always say that you hate him, that you're terrified of him. Well, I'm not anymore, and now I wonder if I ever had any reason to be. Mason, I know you're just trying to get your name in the paper again. I am not interested. Of course you're frightened of Lionel. He's spiteful, he's violent, and if he can't have you, he doesn't want anyone else to. Please, Augusta, would you go and take a cold shower or something? You were, if you are not afraid of him, you better be afraid of me. You get a court order against her. I don't see why not. Don't you dare. Well, then, Augusta, can I count on a retainer from you? What good will a court order do me if he can still see her? Well, I'm not quite sure. Perhaps you need protection from the both of them. Mason, I can take care of myself, thank you. And I hope that suit rots on your shoulders.
There's got to be something we've missed in the chain of capital case. I want to take it from the top and go over everything we've got again, piece by piece. The note with Channing's bloodstains. I want you to see if you can find the original ballistics report and the murder weapon. Actually, I can cover that because it was returned to CC and I know where he keeps it in the study. And we got to talk to the people again, everybody who was there, see if someone can remember any kind of detail that might help us put the rest of this together. Yeah, but you'll have a tough time keeping it secret then. No. Upon that, I insist. No matter who we talk to, we're cool. It's no big deal. I cannot let anybody know what we're doing here. Because I got a feeling that one of them is going to turn out to be a killer. I can make Augusta Lockridge miserable. It does pass the time. Very interesting philosophy, Mason. Mm, you think I'm joking about all this, don't you, Sophia? Till yesterday, when I moved into Kelly's apartment, I was a 30-year-old man without a roof over my head, a bed to call my own, a toilet that you didn't need a coin for, even a decent change of clothes. I'm sorry if desperation offends you. I'm not offended, but you know what? It's nice to hear something genuine from you, keep patronizing me and you never will again. Mason, why don't you accept things as they are? Now, we have both been excluded from the family. I have too. But it's, it's not the end of the world. Mm, easy for you to say. Mason, you brought this on yourself. There's no reason for you to keep warring with your father all the time. Well, you haven't exactly been smashingly successful as peacemaker either, Sophia. Oh, you're right, I haven't. But I don't spend all day, every day, trying to think up ways to hurt him. <laughs> you flatter me. I used to think that I could hurt him, Sophia. I used to try my damnedest to. I said and did things that made me feel less than human. But no more. No, he set out to break me and he just may do it. I can't seem to stop him. And I sure as hell can't hurt him. Cruz! Hey, no sign. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is Eden around? Why in the world would you want to see Eden? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> no, she's out. No telling when she'll be back. Hard to keep track of that one. You're telling me. Because I know what your mother thinks, but I think it's wonderful that you're in love with her. Am I not supposed to know? You always know things about me you're not supposed to. Eden's a very special young lady, Cruz. Difficult, but special. They used to send women like her to convents, unless they could find her a man like you. I don't know, Rosa. I, I think sometimes Mama is right, you know? Eden is spoiled and selfish. She's, uh, she's had everything she ever wanted, and when it broke, she got another one. She's got the attention span of a five-year-old and the temper of a goat. And when are you going to ask her to marry you? Maybe today. Mira. Oh, that's lovely, Cruz. She'll be proud to wear it. I don't know if I was sure that I would have given it to her days ago. She has her doubts. At least that's what she says. She speaks in some kind of code all the time, so half the time I don't know what she's talking about. Of course, there are my doubts, too. 
You're such a chicken, Rosa. I mean, part of me says if I give her this ring, I'm going to lose her. Another part of me says, so what? Who needs this? But another part of me says, if I don't show her that I mean what I say and she can trust my feelings, I'm going to lose her anyway. So what's the difference? <laughs> well, where's the advice? <laughs> With you, I don't give advice. Don't you know that by now? I'll just tell you that you already know what you're going to decide because you always do. Yeah. Yeah, I could think myself blue in the face and analyze what she meant when she said this and she did that. But the bottom line is it's just gotten too hard to be without her. Which I imagine is not too unpleasant sometimes. Well, I hate it, you know. I, I mean, it feels like I'm out of control. I've worked so hard to get my life and my career in good working order, me in charge. But then I remember that some of the best things in my life, like... Uh, like doing a large part of my growing up at your house, for instance. There were things that I couldn't uh, have controlled if I wanted to. They just happened to me, you know? And I think that maybe Eden is the greatest of those blessings, Rosa. I mean, if, if a million bucks fell out of the sky and landed at your feet, you'd be crazy not to pick it up, right? <laughs> Bruce, what are you doing here? Oh, nothing. Eden, you never do nothing. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Where is Rosa scampering off to with a smile on her face? You got a minute. Well, look at you. Don't you look handsome? Mommy, how come we have to get all dressed up? Well, I had an idea. See, um, a surprise for Uncle Cece. I thought I'd call... Reverend Davis, and have him hold the wedding here tonight. You'd like that now, wouldn't you, sweetheart? Sure. But do you feel good enough? Oh, I feel fine. And that'll make me feel even better. Yeah. Cece's car just pulled into the driveway. Can I go tell her? Uh, sweetheart, I'd like you to do uh, Mommy a favor. Rosa, would you? Oh, uh, go let him in. Thank you. Brandon, now, um, can you go upstairs to, to Mommy's bedroom and... In her dresser, uh, in the top drawer on the right-hand side, there'll be a bottle of pills. Now, can you bring them to me? Okay. All right, sweetheart. But, but what I want you to do is um, not tell anybody about this, all right? Because I don't want them to worry and think I'm still sick. Right. Okay. Here he is now. He dragged me in here. If my hair was shorter, it'd be standing on end. I just wanted a little privacy. Privacy? <laughs> we always have privacy. Elevators, houseboats, restaurants, under concern. I'm beginning to think you're ashamed of me. Well, why don't we take this out huh. public then for uh. a change? Well, think about it if you attack me. No, I'm not going to do that. Then I'll attack you. How come every time I want to be serious, you don't? Haven't you noticed? Whenever you want anything, I don't, and vice versa. We're completely mismatched. We're intolerable. We're the kind of people when we go to private places, I mean public places, we, we break things and cause brawls. I think it's in the public interest that we stay in bed. <laughs> no, no. What if we actually went for this? I mean, took a shot at it. It might be cool, you know, the cop and the lady executive. Well, I'm not interested in being a lady, at least not until I'm 40, and sitting around wondering whether or not you're getting shot at doesn't sound fun at all. Well, you think I'm crazy about the idea of staying home alone where you go traipsing all over, all over the world playing uh, corporate footsie, doing who knows what to what knows who, and neglecting your family duties? I know what you want. You want six kids in a tank of tropical fish. Well, I might just think about having one kid, just to see what it feels like. One very quiet, retiring musical prodigy who plays Mozart at high frequencies that only dogs can hear. We could talk about this. I might settle for three kids. What kind of father would you be? You're never around. Your nose is always in police cases. And when you were around, they have a constant diet of TV and, and baseball, week in and week out. At the age of ten, their, their brains would be mush. I would be a very good father, thank you. But come to think of it, I probably couldn't get serious about a woman who... Didn't really want a real home. 
Every woman wants a home. They just don't want a work camp. Laura, who cared about her stock splits more than she cared about me. Oh, Cruz, that ends at 5.30 or 6 o'clock and on an occasional Saturday. Or who goes around flirting with other men just to make me jealous. Women and men flirt when they feel secure. That's it. Only nervous women are the ones that get nervous when their dresses are too high. You're a nervous woman? You sound like it. The moment, yes. You wouldn't be, though, if you had what you wanted. I don't know. It matters on what you want is that. Tropical fish tank. Open it. It won't bite. They're goldfish, not piranhas. If I didn't, then what? What? The gun! 